So where does the nut- nutritarian diet come in? At what stage of your career did you come up with that? And as a dietary philosophy, we haven't explained it yet, so perhaps you could spend a minute and, and help us understand what the nutritarian diet is all about. Well, when I started writing books, and, and, one of, and my second book was Eat to Live, and in Eat to Live, I discussed the nutrient density of food. And I discussed that plant foods, especially green vegetables and other colorful plant foods, have more of the 36 nutrients that the US government keeps track of and measures. That even standard nutrients like vitamins and minerals, these plant foods have very high amounts compared to processed foods or animal products. That animal products are not a rich source of nutrients and they compare to plants Can I ask per a calorie. Quick question on that. Yeah. Because I think right now there's a, there's a huge movement, I'd say, and a theme of people saying that animal foods are in fact the most nutrient dense and in particular organ meats. And I see people posting it all the time on their stories and mm. talking about these being the prize foods of our ancestors and that they, they are actually the most nutrient dense foods that we can eat and using that to kind of right. advocate for a very animal based diet. So that seems to contradict what you're saying. Yes, it contradicts it because they picked a selected amount of nutrients, a limited number that animal products are high in compared to plant foods. But if you go through the full um, spectrum of nutrients that humans require. Diversity. A diversity. And particularly the 36 nutrients that humans keep, that the government keeps track of, not the five that are high in animal products. Which are what, like iron yeah, and iron and B12. Niacin and, yeah, and B12. We can pick, there's a, they're high in certain B vitamins for sure. Riable flavin, they're high in um, copper. They're, you know, in other words, we have certain nutrients they're high in. Zinc, iron, much more than animal products are. But we don't look at nutrients that way. So when I describing a nutritarian diet, it has to do with the, the, uh, having a variety of nutrients humans need and require for slow aging, which require a high amount of antioxidants and phytochemicals that are plant-derived foods that, plant, that animal products don't give you. And, pro- and there, since there are thousands of phytochemicals, just the phytochemical content alone, the lack of phytochemicals makes animal products void of, of nutrient density. When you're considering nutrients human need, we know phytochemicals and antioxidants are, needing, are needed to pro- support later life immune function and slow aging, maintain stem cells, and, and reduce aging of telomeres, and, prevent, and support the immune system for protection against cancer. So we know that these, that argument is with the animal products being high in nutrients is not only not true with regard to that argument, but it's also not true when we put people on high animal product diets and follow them to hard endpoints. A hard endpoint means age of death or what they died of, not just a theory that their nutrients are adequate. Seems to me that it's a uh, disagreement or, or discrepancy between what nutrient density means. Yes, the absolutely. definition of nutrient density. Yeah. Has anyone actually put a, a scientific published definition for nutrient density out there? Not really. You know, I had an ANDI scoring system, which stands for the ANDI, A-N-D-I, which stands for Aggregate Nutrient Density Index, which was based on 36 nutrients measured in a 100 calorie portion of each food, showing that green vegetables had the highest nutrient density by far. Nothing was close to them, and, and animal products were way at the bottom, because I was considering 36 nutrients, and I was considering antioxidant capacity too, so, which is so important for human longevity. But so the nutritarian diet is just not about achieving nutritional, a, a high nutrient level, but an adequate amount of a wide diversity of nutrients that humans can benefit from. So it has to do with nutrient diversity and which you have to achieve, you can only achieve by eating a, a lot of different types of plant material to get that wide degree of nutrient diversity. This episode is proudly brought to you by Inside Tracker. Track your blood biomarkers, understand your biological age, and receive personalized lifestyle tips backed by evidence to optimize your health. To get started with Inside Tracker today and get 20% off your first purchase, head to insidetracker.com forward slash Simon. That's insidetracker.com forward slash Simon for 20% off. And the other side of that coin, which is important here, is what are the compounds that are deleterious at a certain dose that you're not exposing yourself to. That's correct, of course. Right. And, and also the um, nutrient diversity we're talking about also speaks to plant-based diets that aren't nutrient diverse too, right? Where people are just eating a macrobiotic diet of eating almost all rice. You know, I'm saying that those diets may even be better than a, 
than a standard American diet because they're not exposing yourself to so much dangerous nutrients, but they don't give you the longevity for potential and protection and immunosenescence and longevity promotion that you could if you had a more diverse diet with, with a lot of different nutrients like obviously greens, beans, onions, mushrooms, berries, seeds, G-bombs is what I talk about, right? To get the wide diversity of the nutrients that humans need to maximize um, yeah, or, or an ultra-processed plant-based diet. That's correct, exactly. You know, and there's so plenty of studies looking at an unhealthy plant-based diet index, and you see they don't do so well when you compare them to the healthy plant-based index. That's right. It, it all depends on how you what you compare. And that's why a lot of the studies on meat show don't show a deleterious effect. Because in these people who are advocating meat-based diet could say, look, here's a study when people decrease their meat consumption. They're not living sh longer lives because they decrease meat consumption. The difference in lifespan is almost is marginal. And the reason they can show that is because when they decreased meat, they didn't start eating beans or nuts or vegetables. They decreased meat and ate more chicken. Or they decreased meat and ate more cheese. So it's always switching from red meat to white meat, which doesn't show a significant increase in longevity. And they use these people on advocating diets high in meat are using those studies that are, people are comparing red meat to white meat, not red meat to beans or red meat to nuts or red meat to greens or red meat to really healthy plants. And in those studies, which we do have a lot of nowadays over the last, it started in 2018. The there was substitution another, analysis. The substitution analysis studies. So now we have a lot of those studies which there have been one published in 2018, 2019, 2020, and 2021. We have four studies from different researchers around the world showing when they compared animal, pro animal protein to plant protein that substitution diets show dramatic increases in lifespan, demonstrating diets higher in animal protein shorten lifespan and diets higher in plant protein lengthened lifespan. And diets higher in plant protein means those plant protein-rich foods which are four foods, beans, nuts and seeds, green vegetables, and whole grains, not fruit, leaving fruit off because fruit- and Would you say nuts are high protein? I mean, they contain some protein, but they, they're probably, they're more fat. It's depending on the nut or seed, but yes, they're considerably protein adequate. They range in protein content from like 10% to 30%. You know, meat is, let's say, 30%. Pignolia nuts might be even, um, Mediterranean pine nuts might be 40%. Sunflower seeds might be 14%. So yes, they're protein-adequate foods, um, and in combination with other protein foods you're eating, but the studies on nuts are very dramatically positive. So when people reduce anything in their diet and add more nuts, and switch from an equal and isocalorically change from, let's say, potatoes and add nuts, or reduce meat and add nuts, or reduce... Anything you're eating and you add more nuts to a diet, we see enhancements in longevity, particularly cardiovascular disease mortality goes down, but also all-cause mortality increases. So nuts and seeds are a very powerful food that as a source of fat, it makes the nutritarian diet unique in the degree like, because don't forget, the standard American diet gets its fat from oils or animal fats. But a nutritarian diet rejects both oils and animal fats, but it doesn't advocate a diet be, a diet has to be excessively low in fat as long as you're eating whole foods like nuts and seeds or avocado. That's a little bit different to some of the other vegan diets that are promoted, which are sort of more low total fat. Right, correct. So point being here is that, and this is, I mean, this is my understanding of the science as well, is that these unsaturated fats are inherently healthful and that they don't need to be limited. That's correct. I think the science is overwhelming, and I could say with a degree of scientific integrity to say irrefutable, that thinking you're going to get better health by taking all the fat out of your diet but not eating nuts and seeds is not, not only not healthy, it's actually hurtful. To your, it increases risk of disease. Mm -hmm.